is going on everyone so uh, I want to make a quick kind of comparison video of the uh, two most commonly used apps I would say for OBD2 uh, reading through Bluetooth or whatever uh, the first one we'll take a quick peek at is uh, called Torque uh, this will be the free version they have two they have a paid version which has a bunch of other features but the uh, free one's pretty decent you do have an ad at the bottom there uh, real quick, as you can see, there's a couple of different uh, little sections you can have for different layouts. Uh, here's pretty much every sensor you have available to you um, right out of the box. These all work with the BRZ, the ones that I've tested. Uh, coolant, load, uh, RPM I tested. Um, GPS ones just kind of see how the GPS sensors are doing essentially for you. A uh, bunch of stuff for uh, fuel economy, uh, speed GPS, and OBD both uh, and of course if you're you have boost it has, does have a boost readout too uh, they have three different like display methods if you will um, you'll see those here in a little bit uh, right now actually um, they have like a gauge uh, kind of like a, a digital readout if you will like more like a graph style and then they just have like a box uh, display kind of deal uh, comes in three different sizes uh, you saw a few different earlier uh, when we kind of started the video of uh, kind of like the larger display. I'm pretty sure I show a few coming up here in another moment or two. So as you can see, you can kind of arrange them the way you want as well, kind of freely, which kind of makes it nice if you, if you really want to take the time and make a really decent kind of setup on one screen and then one for another reason whatever it may be. Uh, they also have logging features uh, as well, which is kind of handy if you want to actually log what the, is going on with the, the car during operation. Um, and it does read fault codes as well, if that's something you do need to do. Most of these, of course, will read fault codes just fine. Um, let's see here, uh, toggle HUD mode. Uh, that there, if you set it up on the dash, it kind of has it like broadcast on the windshield the best that it can I haven't really tested that because I don't have a way to leave it on the dash uh, they have that option there kind of reset dials the default just clears instantly um, can kind of get annoying if you hit that um, here's the uh, the general setting screen kind of everything you'd find in there from uh, themes to the units you want to set uh, you know imperial or metric whatever that may be uh, they have a ton of themes you can also get from uh, other sources i know there's like a, a gt86 theme more kind of like the uh, style of our built-in dashes so now i'll go ahead and uh kind of show a quick little look at uh, the different sensors in operation, so here we go. So now we got the dash command pulled up, and uh, as you can see right from the get-go, it's already set up for you. No kind of tinkering needed. Uh, right out of the box, you get the G-reader, um, a horsepower readout, and a foot-pound of torque readout, which is super handy right out of the box to have those three. Um, by tapping on each uh, of those three, it'll kind of bring you into a different um, selection. Uh, they have fuel economy readouts. Um, from like current MPG and uh, the others like the average which you see here uh, they also have a boost and vac um, which we had no boost so that read really didn't do anything uh, and they also have uh, here you see like better stats for fuel economy kind of like stats for nerds if you will um, your current fuel level uh, averages over the last five minutes 30 minutes and three hours uh, depending on your journey And then here you can see we have kind of like a, a track kind of readout. And that's something I'd really be using too frequently here. We have timing, intake, coolant readouts, uh, the map, and then the math. Uh, then something for the transmission, which I have not taken the time to look at. So here you see us uh, cycling through the various options. There's the intake temp, coolant temp. Uh, I'm going to go and set that back to default and go ahead and give it a quick rip so you can see the power levels kind of do their thing.
All right, so here we got the uh, like the main menu for dash cam. Um, dashboard is going to take you into what we previously seen. Uh, gauges is going to be kind of more like how torque was laid out with various gauges. Um, as you can see, if you hold down on it, you can adjust them to your exact preference. And of course, uh, set data logging, much like torque as well. Uh, the default layouts are pretty decent, honestly. Uh, I got just about everything you want. I really like this one. Got a big tack. Got your horsepower, the torque, coolant, and current fuel economy. Definitely decent, kind of predetermined ones out of the box. Something torque really did not have, sadly. Um, as you saw, there was just kind of like one big monitor and then some were just blank definitely something they might want to kind of start doing as well just to make the user experience a little bit better um here you have kind of like a quarter mile zero to 60 uh you can kind of test that if you kind of want to i guess <laughs> that's kind of a weird one um Here's kind of like your, your logs, just read them right on the fly there. Unlike Torque, I, th I don't think you can see them. Don't hold me to that, but I don't know if they show up. And of course, you can diagnostics going to let you look at codes. The vehicle, you can select a preference for what vehicle you're running. So as you can see at the top, we got the known vehicle. Uh, skid pad is going to show you kind of like a, a G meter, essentially. As the phone moves in the vehicle, it kind of gets you a little read out there. Kind of nifty. Uh, racetrack is going to pull a GPS of wherever you're, you're kind of racing at, if you will. I don't have GPS on right now. Um, Incline meter, obviously. Um, and then, of course, here's where we want to see settings. Uh, of course, you've got a whole bunch of various options, much like the, uh, much like Torque as well. Kind of the similar setup. Um, get a theme if you want a theme. You can set the resolution. If you're blind like I am, uh, your interface type, whatever you're using. Um, of course, date and time, really the basic stuff you might want to set units. Got everything your heart can desire to get altered there. Uh, your version, persistent PIDs, etc. A uh, ton of really good stuff for sure. Uh, but mainly you'll spend a lot of your time probably in the, the either the dashboard or the gauges section. So where do I stand with the two apps? Uh, I probably have to give the, the win, give the W to Torque for sure, uh, just because of the simple fact that they have the f completely free version with no uh, time limit or anything like that. Um, as far as feature sets go and polish and refinement and just, you know, the user experience, uh, Dash Command would definitely take that win. Uh, the menus are just much more refined. The layout is just that much more easier for the, the end user. Um, if you know after you get your configuration set up done through torque uh, you're left with a very nice environment for sure um, at the end of the day definitely both apps do pretty much the same thing um, if you're going to be tracking at all or doing anything like that uh, would probably recommend dash command over just because of the little track feature and the few other little odds and ends that dash command comes with um, Essentially, if you got the five, six bucks to pay, go with Dash Command. If you don't feel like spending six bucks to do virtually the same thing, minus a little bit of odds and ends, uh, Torque's probably your best bet. Um, I'd definitely like to thank everybody for watching and kind of sticking out to the end if you're watching this part. And uh, definitely stay tuned for the next one and uh, take care.